Okay. Thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Kayla Coleman, and I am the marketing manager for Orisher Technologies, and I will be your moderator today. Just quickly going to run through some housekeeping items. So as usual, in order to cut down on background noise, we have automatically muted everyone's microphone, but we do have the Q&A tool set up to receive questions. The Q&A feature can be found at the bottom of the webinar screen. We will use the second part of today's webinar as a live Q&A session. So if you have questions you would like our panelists to answer, please submit them through the feature and I will read them out to our panelists during the Q&A session. We are going to try to answer all questions during the webinar today, but if we cannot get to your question, we'll follow up with you directly after today's session. We also have contact details at the end of the webinar in case you experienced any issues and are unable to submit your question. With this significant decline in HIV screening due to COVID-19, several jurisdictions and healthcare organizations are looking for innovative strategies to rectify the impact. As per the CDC's recommendation, one such strategy has been the implementation of HIV self-testing programs so that organizations can continue to safely screen for HIV during these uncertain times. We have received many questions around how to implement and run HIV self-testing initiatives to that end, we will be continuing to host our bi-weekly webinars to provide resources and information around the topics you are asking about. We are calling this series Testing Thursdays. This week's webinar entitled Implementing HIV Self-Testing Through Agency Partnerships will feature guest speakers who will discuss their experience implementing and running self-testing programs through partnerships between the health department and local agencies in New York City. I am also joined by my colleague, Rebecca Parsons. Rebecca is part of our public health team at Orisher. Before joining the team, she gained 14 years of experience working with research and government labs. She has been working on our public health team for 10 years now. Rebecca, thank you. And with that, I'll hand it over to you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Kayla. I just want to quickly introduce our New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene presenters. We have Stephanie Hubbard, who is the Director of Program Planning, and Maria Ma, the pro a Program Planner, both with the New York City Department of Health and Mental Hygiene Bureau of HIV. Stephanie and Maria have spearheaded a program since 2017, which works with our community-based or organizations to distribute HIV self-tests. This program has evolved over a number of launches to best suit the needs of the New York City population. As you can imagine, the current pandemic has created an environment which has changed the public health landscape. Stephanie and Maria quickly mobilized to adapt and evolve their program once again. This opened doors and eliminated barriers to HIV testing. With that, I will hand this over to Stephanie and Maria to continue their presentation. Thank you so much, Rebecca and Kayla, um, and thank you to all of you who have joined this webinar today. My name is Stephanie Hubbard. I'm the Director of Program Planning in the Bureau of HIV at the New York City Health Department, and I'm joined here by my colleague, Maria Ma, who's also on the Program Planning team. Um, and next slide. So here at the New York City Health Department, we've been running two self-testing programs since 2015 that together aim to reach all of New York City's priority populations. Today, we're going to focus on the Community Home Test Giveaway Program. Um, it launched in 2017 and really is a true partnership between New York City's Health Department and community-based organizations um, when it initially launched. And really, CBO partners are the cornerstone of the Community Home Test Giveaway model and really leverages their experience with outreach, as well as their outreach activities among priority populations to distri distribute the home HIV self-test um, free of charge. And on the right-hand side, you'll see the priority populations for which we um, really encourage and, and reach out to through this program. Next slide. So as Rebecca just mentioned, you know, we're all aware a major barrier right now is the COVID-19 outbreak where we're trying to minimize in-person contact and, so, and support social distancing. And more and more of our partner agencies are working remotely and, and in-person outreach activities have paused. So because of this, offering the option to test at home is more, has become more important than ever. 
And really our CHTG virtual program leverages the platforms and experiences from our in-person distribution, which has been running since 2016. Next slide. Thank you. Um, so the, like I just said, it really our new virtual program leverages the platforms and experiences of our original programs that we launched. And what it does is expand the CHG partner membership to include hospitals, clinics, community health centers, as well as CBOs and small businesses. So we really ex expanded membership beyond just community-based um, organizations to other entities as well. And because of the expanded partnership, the virtual program is able to support two pathways. One, um, really just general HIV testing through the distribution of HIV self-tests through multiple different means and platforms, uh, which Maria will speak about in just a second, as well as really supporting HIV testing as a part of PrEP and PEP service provision. Um, this is happening quite a bit on the clinical, um, within the clinics and hospital side as well. So with that, I will hand it over to Maria Ma and she'll walk you through the different steps and implementation of the program. Great, thanks Stephanie. Um, next slide. So the CHTG virtual program is really just five easy steps. Um, CHTG partners promote the program. They ask people a few demographic questions, provide their client with a code to redeem a free home HIV test kit, um, and then send them a link for an opportunity to complete a client experience survey at a future date. These five steps could really take place in 30 seconds or in a 20 minute virtual interaction with someone. Um, it could be the short interaction if someone just reaches out to an agency after seeing them post about it on social media, or it could be part of a larger education session that agencies are already having with their client. Um, it really depends on how the agency chooses to integrate this program model into their existing activities, and it can vary based on the services they provide and also their current capacity. Next slide. So I'll really go into each step and just kind of describe what that means exactly. So step one is really promote. So agencies promote that they are a CHTG partner through online and virtual platforms. So this means they can post on social media, they can post about it on their website, they can mention it in email newsletters, um, they can reach out, tell their clients about it when they're having their regular follow-up appointments, whether that's virtual or in person at this point. Um, the partners are really welcome to promote the CHTG over any of the virtual platforms that are available to them. So some have also expressed that they've been using their uh, patient portal to reach out to clients as well. Next slide. CHTG partners um, use the hashtag, hashtag test at home, so that we're able to find their posts easily on social media. Um, so with that, there's a few examples of promotions and posts that our partner agencies have posted on Instagram. Um, we developed a boring promotional template for our partners to use that they had an idea of what language they could use. Um, but, you know, a lot of them really jazzed it up and made it their own. So here's an example of ACQC who really customized the template and made it um, much more uh, colorful. And then there's another one we have from Harlem United, um, and another from Family Health Centers at NYU Langone, the Alliance for Positive Change, uh, Argus Community, Iris House, Canva, and a snapshot from a website from GMHC, which they will talk about a little bit later. And I think it's just really wonderful to see how each agency has really tailored the message for their audience. You can tell from the different colors, the different language that they're using. Um, it's just been really great. Next slide. So moving on to step two, which is ask. So in this step, the agencies have promoted the CHTG and now a client reaches out to say, they are interested in receiving the free home HIV test kit. Um, so the agencies will ask the clients five demographic questions, which are listed on the slide there for you. What zip code do you reside in? What's your gender? What sex were you assigned at birth? What racial ethnic group do you consider yourself to be a member of? Uh, in the past 12 months, what were the genders of your sexual partners? These demographic questions are completely voluntary um, and used to assess who the program is reaching from the health department standpoint. 
Uh, clients do not need to respond to any or all of the questions in order to receive their online coupon code for a home HIV test kit. Um, it is not an eligibility screener. Clients should still receive the online coupon code regardless of their response. Next slide. And then step three is collect. So now the agencies have asked the questions to their clients, they collect the responses um, to the, those demo questions in an online data collection tool that we developed. Step four is the next slide. There you go. Um, this is the step in which the agency then gives the client their online coupon code to redeem their free kit. So I've been talking about this online coupon code. What is it exactly? Um, it's just a discount promo code that one can use on the Orishore website to redeem a free kit. It basically works like when you're online shopping and you enter code like free ship um, at checkout. Um, so it kind of works like that. And then next slide. So the CHTG partners give their client the online coupon code along with some brief instructions to tell the client how to order the kit or um, the agency can also order the kit for the client as well if the client prefers. So on the slide here is some templated language that we prepared for the agencies um, so that it could, they could just copy and paste the instructional text into an email or a text or read it off when they're on the phone with their clients. Um, some agencies have really shortened this language um, and kind of made it their own and translated it as well. So this is just some, some template language we gave the, to them as a resource. Next slide. And then the final step is send. So the CHTG team has a client experience survey that asks the client about their experience using the home test kit. The survey uh, is sent out six to eight weeks after the agency has uh, the interaction with the client. And so clients will receive an e-gift card after completing the survey. In this step, agencies invite the client to sign up for the client experience survey by sending them the link to an email form where uh, they can then leave their email address. And then the health department team will send the surveys out to these email addresses directly. Next slide. And that's really it. Those are the five steps. Um, and we have two partner organizations who will present next so they can really speak about how they implemented this program model into their activities. But before we do that, uh, we have a little bit of data to share with you. Next slide. Um, even before we look at the data, uh, we wanted to take a step back and really put everything into context because it feels like we've been doing this for a very long time. Um, and honestly, our partners very much are well-oiled machines, but it's in actuality, it's only been a month and a half. Um, we really began developing the program model at the health department in late March. Um, where we kind of got the okay in, on March 27th. And by April 2nd, we had sent out the invitation email um, to invite agencies to apply to join the CHTG. And then a week after that, on April 9th, we had our kickoff webinar. Um, the response to the program has really been incredible. We've had programs um, that have begun implementing, oh, just go back, the CHTG virtual program even before the launch webinar. Um, and we've had other programs come on board just last week. So we have CHTG partners that are really in different phases of implementation and, and it still all works. Next slide. So in the CHTG, we have 62 CHTG partner programs in total in New York City, which represents 54 unique organizations. Um, what that basically means is that one organization may have multiple programs in the CHTG because they operate so separately from one another. So for example, we have an Argus community kind of prevention program with us. And then we have like an Argus community EIS catch program, which um, they act as two different partner programs, but are one organization. We have agencies representing all five boroughs uh, across in Manhattan, the Bronx, Staten Island, Queens, and Brooklyn. Next slide. We also have many different types of organizations represented in, uh, in the CHTG. We have CBOs, which we have the most of, uh, colleges, which are student health centers, community health centers, hospitals, um, and one private medical office. 
So some of these agencies are funded by the New York City Health Department to provide HIV prevention services, such as PrEP and PEP services and PrEP and PEP navigation services. Um, and that's all represented by the green color that you see there. So those are the agencies that are funded. Those that are not funded by our prevention program are represented in the yellow slash orange bars. And now we'll look at some of our distribution and redemption data. So this graph uh, shows the number of codes distributed and then separated by redemption status. So in total, uh, our partners collectively have distributed 523 codes as of May 14th. So since launch to la about last week. Um, and this is really incredible. I think as in the next slide, we'll see how agencies have really ramped up um, the program at their, at their agency. And on top of that, 419 of these codes, um, as seen by the green line, as of Thursday last week, were also redeemed. And then 104 codes have yet to be redeemed, as seen by the red line. Next slide. So this figure shows our distribution and redemption data broken down by week. So since the launch of our program, um, agents have, agencies have begun implementing the program, um, and you can see that our distribution continues to increase week by, after week um, in the gray bars there. We do also have a high redemption rate as well, in most cases over 90%, which is shown by the green bars there. Um, our redemption data is slightly delayed, which is why we don't quite have all the redemption numbers yet for the May 10th week. Um, but I've, you know, just crunched the numbers preliminarily today and I can tell you it's much more than 53. So that's really, um, that's really great. Next slide. Great. So who have we been reaching through this program? Uh, based on the demographic data submissions, we know that the CHTG program is reaching our priority populations that Stephanie showed at the top of the presentation. Agencies have provided codes collectively to 393 Black and or Latino individuals, which represents about 75% of everyone who received a code. We have reached 290 men who have sex with men. This includes both cisgender and transgender individuals. And 192 of these MSM identified that they are Black and or Latino. We've also reached 22 G TGNC individuals and 17 of these TGNC folks are Black and or Latino. And finally, we know that the program is also reaching women. Um, we have reached 156 women, which represents about 30% of our total program. 138 of these women are Black and or Latino women. Um, and we, as I mentioned before, we don't have an eligibility screener in this program. And so the fact that we are reaching our priority populations is really a testament to our partner agency's expertise, their experience, um, and their reach. And that's really a perfect segue to our partners. Next slide. So that is our contact information for the health department, um, but I'd really like to introduce you to two of our awesome CHTG partners. These are both uh, agencies who became partners in April when we launched and are fully implementing the program now. So I'll let them tell you how they did it. Um, so first up, we have Carrie and Paul from New York Presbyterian. Thank you, Maria. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Carrie Carnavali. Uh, I work at New York Presbyterian Hospital and their HIV prevention program. Um, I'm the principal investigator on most of the grants from the Department of Health. Um, so I pretty much run the operations of the program and I'm here with... Uh, Paul Richards. Uh, I'm the uh, project lead. So basically, I just handle the uh, nitty gritty of the administration uh, for our uh, prevention services programs. Next slide, please. So this is our team uptown. Um, so on a good day before COVID, uh, we had a pretty busy prevention practice, seeing about 60 patients per week for HIV prevention services or sexual health services, and about 250 visits per month. Um, our program's been active since uh, 2015, and we uh, graciously received uh, grants from the Department of Health to implement our program and get it up and running. Um, we have a fair amount of STDs within our population as well. Um, 
So in a review of 447 clinic patients who had been to the program in at least 30 days, um, this study was done last year, 25% uh, had an STI on entry and 47% at, at least had one STI while engaged in care. Um, our staffing is pretty robust. We have full, uh, three full-time nurse practitioners and six full-time prevention coordinators within our team. Next slide, please. So starting March 22nd, which was when the orders to self-quarantine and non-essential businesses were closed within New York City, uh, we unfortunately had to shut one of our busiest clinics and move to another clinic. Um, and non-essential, so we kind of took that to mean um, non-urgent visits were canceled. So we were still able, luckily, to see people for PEP and for uh, STI treatment, and, uh, but not routine PrEP visits and not routine STI screening. Um, but there still was an obvious need for uh, these services within our community. Um, so on April 6th, we received the first codes from the Department of Health, very, very <laughs> gratefully, um, and we just kind of went up and running. So we definitely had people texting and calling us asking for uh, refills on their prescriptions prior to this. Um, and until we were able to get the codes for um, or short tests from the Department of Health, we were unfortunately just refilling the, uh, their PrEP prescriptions without having um, the recommended HIV test, uh, which made us very nervous, but we also kind of did a cost benefit analysis on that and decided that it was more important for people to stay on their PrEP at this time. And we'd, once we figured out what we were gonna do, um, we would come back and revisit how to get them tested remotely. Um, so we were very, very happy to get these codes from the Department of Health. Um, and since that time, we actually, um, we've, we've distributed 20 kits just in the last two days. So um, we've distributed about 140 kits to patients for at-home testing. Um, patients have taken to it very, very well. Uh, and our coordinators, more important, more, not more importantly, equally as important is our, our coordination staff has taken to the process very well, which has been really important. Next slide. So this is kind of the workflow that we came up with. We have two ways of our patients um, getting the kits. So a patient will contact us for prep refills. Uh, we make sure they've been adherent. We make sure there's uh, no symptoms of STIs right now and um, do just a brief mental health check-in. And then the um, coordinator receives the necessary demographic information to make sure that the Orshore is delivered to the patient. Um, and we also then uh, simultaneously set up a televisit with uh, one of our providers. Um, so we're able to do a telemedicine visit through uh, EPIC, which is our medical record. Um, and then the, the patient reaches out uh, when they complete the test and sends a screenshot to the coordinator with the results and it's documented in the chart. Next slide. So the other thing we, we do, not as much as the other workflow, but this is proven to be pretty important for people who have differing circumstances. Um, we have two pharmacies that we are collaborating with um, that we've provided kits to directly. So when they are delivering the medication to the patient, they also bring the Orshore kit as well. Um, so the times that we have used this uh, has been if someone is concerned about confidentiality and would rather go to the pharmacy, they can go and pick up a kit with their meds. Um, other times we've used it as if uh, they needed it the same day, um, things like that, or they were going somewhere and they couldn't access delivery in other times. Um, so that's been pretty handy. Um, so for that, the pharmacy contacts us and says the patient needs refills. Uh, the patient, uh, the uh, coordinator kind of does the same thing, but realizes that it might be better if the pharmacy also delivers the or quick test. Um, so the same demographic information, the same screening is conducted. And then the patient uh, reaches out when they've completed the test as well and sends a screenshot. This has been really helpful for uh, new uh, PrEP initiations and also PEPs. So people who call and are need, actually in need of PEP, we, you know, we want to make sure to get an HIV test as soon as possible. So we've used this method for that as well. Next slide. 
So um, this program and the provision of Orquic tests to patients has quickly and easily become a part of our busy HIV prevention programs workflow. Uh, feedback has been amazing from patients. Uh, the, overall, there's been only positive uh, reviews of the process. Um, and there's been no complaints as of yet. Um, so innovative ways, can, the innovative ways like this to provide remote prep care is going to continue to be important to keep up momentum in New York City and ending the epidemic. And we're very, very grateful to be a part of this initiative. Thank you. Great, thank you, Carrie. Um, and next up, we have Omi and Armstrong from GMHC. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Armstrong Dingwani. I am the Senior Managing Director for Prevention Services. And then I'm with my colleague, Omi. So oh, hello, my name is Omi Singh. I'm the Director of the GMHC Testing Center. So yeah, um, next slide, please. So we're just gonna give you a little context about GMAC before we get into the actual details about the um, HIV testing program. Um, yes, our mission is at GMAC is to end AIDS epidemic and uplift the lives of everyone affected um, because we know that with the right information, care and support, it's possible for people living with HIV to live healthy, fulfilling lives. Um, and ending the epidemic is also part of GMAC's goals. So for us to make that happen, GMAC continually seeks to promote education, increase awareness, improve care, reduce stigma, elevate relevant policies, and build strong supportive communities, of which we'll get to learn more as we continue with the presentation. Next slide, please. So, we provide holistic services um, in order to treat the whole person and assist with the variety of challenges our clients face. And I'd like to point that um, although the agency was named Gay Men's Health Crisis and we continue to use the acronym GMHC, we actually serve people of all ages, of all genders, sexualities, regardless of the HIV status. Uh, on an annual basis, we serve around 14,000 clients. And just in 2019, we had a new intake of about 835 clients at GMAC. So the list you're seeing here is not, it's current, but it's not exhaustive. Um, exhaustive and, and uh, so it's a list of services that are offered by GMAC pre-COVID-19 crisis. Uh, we continue to offer a lot of these services right now, um, but I'll talk about that later. For now, I want to focus more on our testing services before the crisis hit. Next slide, please. So at the testing center before the crisis hit, uh, the COVID-19 crisis hit, we did counseling to get an idea of a client's current knowledge, risk factors, and help them identify ways in which they can protect themselves and reduce risk going forward. We also offered rapid HIV and HCV testing as well as STI testing for chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis at three sites. We also offered all clients who came in for testing an opportunity to learn more about PrEP and PEP and offered linkages for medical providers, to medical providers, excuse me. Um, while our medical director oversees the testing center operations, we actually don't have a clinician on site who can examine clients um, or prescribe treatment for HIV or STIs. Rather, we work closely with a network of medical providers across the city, um, as well as with the New York City DOH, sexual health clinics. And uh, we, offer, we offer referrals for care and treatment to our clients in need through that mechanism. So in addition to our on-site testing that we, we uh, I just talked about, um, that is our walk-in clinic. Staff also performed outreach to outreach activities and offered HIV testing services in many community settings. Uh, we have a lot of partners across New York City that we work with, colleges, um, universities, churches, uh, and so forth. So the pictures here on the slide, you know, some of the top, the one on top, some staff members at our clinic, and the bottom picture shows 
some staff members at a gym that we partnered with. Uh, we started working with New York sports clubs, uh, offering testing there on a weekly basis since last year. Next slide, please. So now post COVID-19, like many, other, in, many others in NYC, GMAC closes building operations and we transition to supporting our clients remotely. We are now able to provide most of these services that I talked about um, that we did pre-COVID-19, uh, mental health services, substance use, counseling, legal and advocacy work, financial management, prevention and community health services. Um, so our staff have found ways to continue working with clients. And then two departments have had to make an especially large shift due to COVID-19. That is our food and nutrition services that shifted from congregate meals and the distribution of pantry bags to, the, to delivery of meals and pantry items, as well as distribution of grocery gift cards. We call that program GMAC's Meals on the Go. Um, and it's been running quite successfully since New York City, New York State went on pause. And of course, the testing center joined the community home testing giveaway program to be able to transition from in-person testing to the distribution of home tests. Now I'll hand it over to Omi. Next slide, please. Thanks, Armstrong. So many of our clients uh, pre-COVID-19 reported finding us via a web search. So to promote our services, we first updated the GMHC website. Um, so this image that you see here of a test in the doorway of a home is what we developed internally and you'll see it in almost all of our promotional postings. So this banner cycles on the GMHC front page and next slide. Clicking on it leads to the GMHC testing center page. So pre-COVID, this listed our hours of operation and had some information about the kinds of testing that we did. Um, so it now says, though the testing center is closed until further notice, in response to the COVID-19 outbreak, you can order a free home HIV test. And we have our phone number listed, so those who are interested can give us a call and get the process started. Uh, we also added an FAQ with some information about the test, links to the OraQuick website and demonstration video, and some information about PrEP and PEP. Next slide. So we also posted on social media, here are some example postings um, that were put up on Instagram and Facebook. We emphasized that uh, the test kits were free and also in the description, um, made sure that we mentioned that no blood is needed for the test because we thought that might make it more acceptable and doable for our clients. Next slide. Uh, we have a separate line that Spanish speakers may call to request an at-home test. So we also did some Spanish language specific promotion. Um, promotion was also done through two Facebook pages. So in addition to the official GMHC page, we also posted to the Clubhouse GMHC page where we engage more specifically with the clients who come to our youth drop-in center called the Clubhouse. Next slide. We have also been running a Google ad campaign. So you can see the language we used here, GMHC Testing Center, get a free home HIV test kit, call us today for more details. Um, so the campaign goal, of course, was to get people to call our agency and we have had pretty good outcomes so far. Um, so we've had over 107,000 impressions. So an impression is counted each time uh, the ad is shown to somebody visiting a search results page or a website on Google. Um, we've had over 900 clicks. Um, so when people click the ad, they're taken to the GMHC Testing Center website. And people might also click uh, the phone number or the phone icon in the ad to directly call the center. And we've gotten 31 verified calls through this ad campaign. Um, so you can see listed here some of the search phrases um, that indicate what people are Googling when the ad comes up. Uh, there are more than are listed here. This image just shows the ones that are used more often, um, but it shows that people are very clearly seeking services during this time. Next slide. So in terms of some of the detail, details of our uh, distribution technique, we have three staff members who are taking calls to the main testing line and one staff member who is fielding the Spanish language requests. Um, everyone has access to a shared Excel sheet where we track the following items that are listed here. Um, so the tracking sheet is really designed to guide the staff member through the process of test distribution. 
And aside from the, the variables required for the CHTG program, we also track whether our callers have tested at JMHC before or if they are new to, to JMHC. We also offer callers the option for a staff member to call them back in about a week to follow up. Um, we do let everyone know, of course, that even if they don't request a follow-up phone call from us, that we are available for support if needed. Um, so it's in this follow-up session that we can really engage clients in the other services we offer at the GMHC Testing Center. Next slide. So most people do accept a follow-up phone call. Um, as of yesterday morning when I ran the stats on this, about two-thirds of our callers did accept a follow-up phone call. Um, another interesting thing that we've seen is that almost 80% of the people who have requested a home HIV test kit from us were not existing GMHC clients. Um, so this shows that distribution of these home kits might actually help us engage new clientele. Next slide. So we do screen people for PEP need at initial distribution, um, both so that we can make a referral if needed and also to advise the clients of the window period for this test. For those clients who do accept the follow-up phone, uh, phone call, we provide a version of the pre- and post-test counseling uh, session that someone might get if they walked into our clinic pre-COVID. Um, we're offering education and counseling, we screen folks for PrEP and PEP, and we make referrals to medical providers where needed. Um, we also screen for other needs, such as mental health care, substance use counseling, services for intimate partner violence, and we make referrals internally and to partner agencies as needed. Um, and we have, since the rollout of this program about one month ago, uh, successfully linked clients to medical care for confirmatory HIV testing and treatment and uh, for PrEP initiation. Next slide. Uh, so some feedback that we have gotten from clients is that they do like the privacy of taking the test at home. Uh, many do indicate that they are comfortable handling the testing and the follow-up on their own. Uh, we have also had a few instances of people requesting two test kits so that they can test with a partner and in one case a sibling. Um, and we are still receiving phone calls um, for those who are specifically looking for in-person testing and decline to test at home. Uh, they seem to be self-identifying as not being a good, good candidate for an at-home test for whatever that reason may be. Um, but overall, it's clear that people still do need HIV and sexual health services. The pandemic certainly hasn't lessened that need, and I'm very glad that we do have this option to get people these tests at home and to continue to engage with clients. Okay, great. Thank you very much to Maria, Stephanie, Ami, Armstrong, Carrie, and Paul for presenting on your program. Um, we, we have received quite a few questions, so I, we can kick off our Q&A session. I will read out the questions that have been submitted and uh, to our panelists, if you have something you'd like to contribute, please feel free to answer. So the first question that we received was around the incentive cards, uh, I believe were mentioned in the first presentation. So the question was, how much are the incentive cards worth that are given out for completing the survey? Are they a visa card or to a certain store? And does this vary by agency? Hi, this is Maria. Um, yes, the incentive uh, e-gift card for completing the client experience survey is for $25. Um, it is to CVS right now, um, but we, we have the, you know, based on volume um, and we might have to change the dollar amount and the uh, store that the gift card is for. Um, this does not vary by agency. All of our CHTG partners, all of their clients would receive the same incentive for completing the client experience survey. Great, thank you. The next question asks, are you aware of any efforts to provide home testing for other STIs? And they list some examples such as hepatitis B, C, and et cetera. Um, Maria, I can take that question if, if you want. Go ahead. <laughs> so uh, we received a grant through our hospital to administer gonorrhea and chlamydia swabs to patients via mail. Um, so we are doing this right now and we're also doing a fourth generation dried blood spot HIV test through mail. Um, there's talk of being able to amplify the dried blood spot to be able to test for other things, but our lab can't, can't do that yet. Okay, thank you. 
The next question asks, what methods can be used to reach out to clients to receive test kits if the agency isn't clinic-based, but is a CBO that does outreach to reach clients? So I can start with that and then Omi and Armstrong, if you want to jump in. So um, the, they can, um, a CBO that wants to do outreach right now um, can certainly leverage their social media platforms. They can in reach um, to their existing clients and they can do a lot of what GMHC um, described there is, is setting up a hotline, doing Google ads. Um, anything else you want to add, Omi and Armstrong? You might be on mute. Uh, yeah, no, I think it absolutely makes sense to engage people online. Um, as we said, we don't have medical providers or clinicians um, in our testing center. Um, so something that we did before rolling this out was to make sure that we had an idea um, and a network of medical providers who were still open, who were still seeing or able to see new patients who might test positive um, at home or who were experiencing symptoms of an STI. So we have people um, in our network that we're able to reach out to for those things. Great, thank you. Uh, the next question is, how long does it take for the patient to receive the test? Um, I'll, I'll start. Uh, it really varies. It's, it, it totally depends and I can't figure out why. Um, sometimes it's 48 hours, sometimes it's a week. Uh, you know, the mail systems have been really disrupted uh, because of COVID, so I, I'm assuming it's because of that, but it, it can really vary even just within the tri-state area that we're sending kids to. Omi, I don't know if you've seen the same thing. Yeah, some people are receiving them very quickly. I think the longest we've had a client follow up to say that they've had to wait is about a week and a day but it, they are coming out fairly quickly. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is, could you speak to what percentage of tests distributed did not receive results from clients? Um, did not receive results or did not receive the, the actual kit? Uh, they, they didn't quite specify, but I believe the question is, what percentage of tests distributed did not receive a follow-up interaction from clients? Okay, so uh, we're close to 80% of the people that we've sent kits to have provided us with results. Um, but again, we only know that they got the kit when we got the results. So um, for the people that we haven't heard back from, we're not, we, we wait till the televisit to kind of check in um, but because we're distributing kits so fast, uh, I won't know until I get, I have the actual televisit. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so on our end, as I said, about two thirds of the folks that we um, distribute test kits to do request a follow-up phone call, were successfully able to follow up and get results from about half of those. So overall about one third um, of the clients that we distribute um, these vouchers for, we do get um, a final result from. Um, that said, there it's not a requirement for a client to report back to us their results. Okay, thank you. Um, Maria, I know you touched on, you know, how some of your sites are funded and some are not, but we received a question asking if this program is funded through CDC prevention dollars, and if so, how are you meeting the CDC data requirements? Uh, this is Stephanie. I can actually answer that one. So yes, um, our HIV program is funded through um, CDC prevention dollars um, through our 1802 grant, actually. And um, we have reporting requirements. HIV self-testing is actually um, something that they are very interested in. And so we report directly on our um, HIV self-test distribution numbers. And then in addition, and that's really in addition to other HIV testing numbers that we get from other programs. I hope that answers your question. Yep, I think so. And if not, feel free to submit uh, another question and we can talk through that one too. 
Um, the next question we received is, is a CLIA waiver needed for the agencies that are offering home testing codes? No, um, CLIA waivers are not needed um, and it's approved and Forrester can speak more to this, but it's really FDA approved for over-the-counter use and can be sold um, at pharmacies throughout uh, the nation really, um, so you do not need a CLIA waiver. Thank you, Stephanie. The next question was about the relationship between the Department of Health and the program. So the question asks how the relationship was established and if you're able to discuss, was there any financial support provided for the administration work needed to promote, deliver, and track the test kit distribution? Hi, this is Maria, I can answer that. So um, the relationship was first established by basically through that, send, that invitation email that we sent out on April 2nd. So we leveraged our various listservs. We have um, a large community engagement group called New York Knows. We have HIV um, planning group, which is run from our prevention uh, program. Um, and lots of agencies are involved in that. And so we leveraged all these different listservs and sent out the invitation for everyone to fill out an application. And essentially, if um, people filled out the application, they were accepted into our program. We do not provide fin financial support um, for the administrative work needed to promote, deliver, and track the test kit distribution, which I think is what makes this program um, so interesting is that like, GMHC and NYP are doing this. Um, we don't pay them to do this. Um, and so, but with that, we understand, of course, that there are different, there isn't an expectation of how many kits an agency needs to um, distribute or how many redemptions um, need to occur. So every agency, particularly during this time, has different capacities. It can be a full team of 10 outreach workers. It could just be one person managing the program. And so we really encourage our partners to integrate the CHTG model into their existing activities. So if they're already talking to people, then they're just um, talking about HIV testing and self-testing as well. It's another tool in their tool belt. That's how we think about it. Okay, great. Thank you for the explanation. The next question submitted was, if someone test is positive, how are programs or the Department of Health ensuring the person is engaged at a medical home to start treatment? This is Carrie. Hi. Um, so I, we're a little biased because our patients are already engaged in a, in a home, but yes, that's us. Um, but we have had uh, two positives already. And, uh, you know, our, our team's pretty good about educating patients that this is a preliminary result and the patients need to come in. Um, so both ended up being negative. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're lucky that we can offer confirmatory testing at our site. And this is, um, Stephanie, from, from the health department standpoint, we're, um, since HIV self-testing, again, is already something that um, can be accessed, you know, um, as one wishes by, you know, through purchasing at a pharma pharmacy, we really just supporting access in general. So if I had mentioned at the very beginning of the presentation that there's kind of two avenues, either being a part of kind of other HIV prevention services or HIV care services, which um, Carrie just spoke to, but if they are, if an agency is simply just distributing an HIV self-test, um, uh, not a, as a part of any other service, they are not required to follow up and get the test result back, and they're not required to, and the patient's not required to um, reach out and report their positive test. However, Orisher has a really fantastic call line that's 24 seven um, that provides really great information, and they actually have New York City specific information that we've given to them. Um, there are instructions and a lot of information in the self-test kit itself that encourages anyone who um, and really supports anyone who does test positive to find, you know, to find a location in order to get a confirmatory um, test and also get care. And then when you order it through our codes that we distribute out that Maria had mentioned, um, you get a New York City specific kit. And what that means is that there's a couple of inserts um, included in the box that the kit comes in um, that are specific to PrEP, PEP, and HIV confirmatory testing, as well as linking to HIV care. So those are a couple of different ways for, for um, really supporting clients who do test positive that may or may not follow up with an agency. 
Great. Thank you, Stephanie. That was very insightful. Um, the next question we had was, it was more of a general comment, but it, it came in and questioned why the MSM category includes gay identified men and transgender women. Uh, Stephanie, is that something that you can address? Absolutely. Um, and so just to clarify, really just to clarify, our categories um, that we presented on, um, when Maria presented on, we categorize by gender identity and not um, uh, not by not by sexual act or or uh, behavior, um, as well as kind of uh, different different body really. Um, so it's really around gender identity. So our uh, trans women actually would not be included in the MSM category. It would be trans men. Um, so anyone who identifies uh, as as a man, trans men or cis men, would be included. And if they identified having sex with um, men. So we include cis women and trans women in our, in, in our data around women. We include cis men and trans men in our data around men. Great, thank you very much. The next question was, in the case that someone wants to order additional test kits, is there a limit on the amount sent per household? Sure, this is Maria, I can answer that. Um, so right now we have a limit of two kits per address. However, we know that people are moving around, they're shifting um, and people might be quarantining with each other. And so we do ask our agencies to just check in with us. Um, and you know, if that, that limit needs to be lifted for a certain case, we do check it on a case by case basis. Thank you. Um, the next question was around uh, participation in the program. So the question is, can CBOs outside of the New York area receive help with integrating this program? Sure. Uh, we're always happy to answer questions and provide technical assistance. Um, I'm not sure if that's also for the partner agencies, if, if they don't want help from the health department necessarily, um, but we're open to answering questions as well. The other thing I will note too is, um, this is Kayla, but at Orisher, we are aware of some other programs running in other states. So Maria and Stephanie have graciously agreed to answer any questions that come through. But if you are interested in activities happening outside of New York State, um, please reach out to us and we can connect you to people running programs in your area to see if they have additional support to offer. And actually, I'd also add to that, um, is that New York State, so we are, you know, just the New York City Health Department. So New York State also has their own self-testing program as well. So feel free to reach out to them. Great. The next question asks, have you seen an increase of positives with self-testing or how many positives have you seen? And if so, what is the compliance like for those getting treated? Um, I think we kind of answered that a little bit, but we've had uh, two what ended up being false positives, um, which is pretty normal with this testing platform. Um, and they just came in, we did confirmatory testing. We, um, we haven't seen, knock on wood, haven't seen a, a definitive positive yet. And that's in 150, 150 tests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So actually one of the first test kits we distributed, um, a client did test positive at home. Um, we were able to link that person to uh, a medical program um, and they were had an appointment to get confirmatory testing in the next two days and it was confirmed positive they were linked to care so one case so far and they were linked to care and um, on treatment very quickly great thank you both um okay we we've received quite a few questions but we are dwindling on time so I'll ask this as the last question, but with regards to Google Ads, how long does the ad run and how much does it cost? Uh, and the assumption is the analytics are already included in the package. Um, yeah, the analytics are already included in the package, but uh, in terms of costs, uh, you can create your own budget, um, depending on how many people you wanna reach on a daily basis. It also depends on your goal, so it can run anything from $60 a day to $100 a day. Um, so you're in control in terms of how much you want to spend. But obviously, 
the more people you want to reach, the more money you have to spend. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So to be respectful of everyone's time, we're going to move away from the Q&A session now. For any questions that were not answered, we will make sure to follow up with you directly. That concludes today's webinar. We have recorded this session per usual and we'll be sending out the link to everyone shortly. We will also include a quick link to a survey to see if you found the information discussed today useful. If you have dis uh, so suggestions on topics that we should cover in upcoming webinars, please feel free to mention those in the survey as well. During today's pandemic, it is even more important to look for innovative ways to stay connected to our communities for HIV testing, screening, care, and prevention. And it is also important to remember that we are all in this together. I'd once again like to thank all of our panelists for sharing your insights and experiences today. And you'll notice on the screen, we also have some contact information. So you have a team of public health professionals here to help you or to answer any questions you may have. Each member of our public health team at Orisher has worked as a leader in the field of HIV and STI prevention and can be a valuable partner to you. The list of team members on the screen is by state. Please feel free to contact them if you need support or have any questions. You can also visit orisher.com slash to request more information. Our team is prepared to support you in whatever way that we can. Um, Maria and Stephanie also shared their contact information. So if you are looking to connect with them afterwards, uh, it will be found in the recording. Um, and I say this at the end of every webinar, but I genuinely mean it. And it comes from our entire team at Orisher. I hope you all stay safe and healthy. And I know you are striving to make, um, to make changes and innovations in the fight against COVID in your community and help keep HIV screening numbers up to achieve our goals of 2030. And our team believes what you are doing is making the difference. So thank you sincerely, and we hope that you will join us for our next webinar.